Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the Raving Patients Podcast. As you know, I'm your host, Dr. Len Tao, and um, I want to let you know I'm really excited about today's guest. Um, many of you know who he is. Um, he has his own show um, that he is one of the most passionate speakers I've ever met. I actually met him when I was a very young dentist at the Greater New York Dental Meeting, um, and we've once I started speaking, we've seen each other many, many times. Um, he is the founder um, of ACT Dental, and uh, I'm very excited to welcome my friend uh, Kirk Barrent on the Raving Patients podcast. Uh, Kirk, thanks for joining me today. Oh, dude, it's so good to see you, man. I'm so freaking proud of you. You know, I remember that day when I met you and your dad, and then to see you, I think one time, um, you know, over the years, the AACD in uh, New Orleans, and then also we were checking in at the same time, the Yankee, remember, in the lobby, and I'm like, what are you doing? You're like, I'm speaking. I'm like, and to watch you come on the scene and do all, I mean, I think you just do fabulous stuff, so I'm pumped. And then you got a podcast. I'm like, well, oh, this well, is awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well, I, I appreciate you finding the time. And we're we're actually for those that are listening, um, I have actually may have already. Uh, I don't know the timing of things, but I'm doing a recording with Kirk uh, in about an hour on on an hour or so on his on his uh, podcast as well. So uh, we have a little bit of cross promotion going on here. But let me uh, for those that don't know who you are, um, which you have to be hiding under under a rock, in my opinion, not to recognize your name. Um, or, or you never go to a, a trade show, you know, if you don't go to trade shows or you don't have social media, <laughs> you know, I don't know how, how many of those dentists exist, but, um, if you don't know who Kirk is, I'm going to read you his, his, uh, bio. So Kirk speaks and consults with dentists all over the world on how to create a better practice and a better life. As one of Dentity's top seminar leaders and online education platform experts, Kirk has invested more than 25 years of his professional life, optimizing the best systems and practices within the dental industry. He has spoken at every major dental meeting in the U.S. He and his company, Act Dental, have been consistently ranked as one of the top dental consultants in dentistry for the last eight years by Dentistry Today. Incorporated magazine named Act Dental to its Inc. 5000 list as one of the fastest growing companies in the U.S. Dr. Peter Dawson of the Dawson Academy called Kirk the best motivator I've ever heard. Kirk has invested a lifetime of assembling the very best talent dentistry has to offer to build a trusted team of advisors, advisor experts, that customize individual solutions for each dentist they serve. Uh, my favorite thing about being part of this incredible company is one thing, the people. People, uh, excuse me, the people. Because when you find the right people, it changes your life and ultimately it changes the game. When Kirk isn't inspiring dentists and their teams, he usually is coaching or watching his kids sports or at home doing what he loves most, spending time with his amazing wife, Sarah, and their four children, Kinsey, Lily, Zoe, and Bo, or Zoe, excuse me, Zoe and Bo. <laughs> I have a patient, her name is it's Zoe, and we will call her Zoe and Zoe. And then one day she says, you know, my name is Zoe. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. You should have corrected me. So when I said Zoe and Bo, I said, I don't think you do that to your kid. So I apologize. Um, that's more of me just not understanding my, uh, my, my patients. Um, so Kirk, thanks again for joining me today. Brother, I'm so excited to be here. So I'm excited and... Uh, Dentistry is an awesome profession. It's a very noble profession. I fell into this thing. And so, you know, being, I started Act Dental, I don't know, you know, 23 years ago. Um, and I always wanted to be a teacher. So this kind of was a great fit for me. And I, I love, I have a disease. And one of my diseases is just, I, I have to know how things work. And so when I was a young consultant, I would just go from practice to practice. I'd come to your office if you were a great dentist, and I know you are. I would just, photocopy all your systems and I would be like oh how do you know and I would be thinking I'd be leaving with the secrets and in some respects yes but it wasn't so much the paper it was how the dentist thought so the development and our growth of act dental practice coaching has just been fun we're a small coaching company in dentistry I'm a big fan of better life you know a better practice better life all that kind of stuff I mean there's a reason most of you if you're listening this became a dentist and it's great to make money, but you, you wanted a life. You know, most every dentist I talk to, like, why'd you become a dentist? Well, my neighbor was a dentist. And it looked like he had a great life, or I had an uncle. You know, you could just see the joy in their face. And I think that's the why and why you do it. And there's nothing better than working with a young dentist, even now, who's fresh out of dental school. And I tell these kids the same thing. Dude, I got one goal for you. I want you to get out of your car, walk to your building and go, I love how I do it. And that's going to set you up for four decades of joy. Dentistry's hard. 
It's extra hard for you if you're listening to this podcast because the word shade, shape, translucency, margin, those mean different things to you than somebody just getting credits at the state meeting. You actually care. And so, like, it's one of those things where if you set this up right, it's an awesome. Here's the other thing, Len. We're going to talk about this a little bit. You walked into the greatest profession ever. There's zero rules. You can live in Florida and have a practice in Philly. You can work Seven to three, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if you want to. You can work as few, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules. The board in your town doesn't say you need to be open later and you have to comply. No, you can hire whoever you want. You ever thought about that? Like you don't, you don't move to a town and they go, hey, we've assembled your team. Here they are. Good luck. You know, no, you can do whatever you want in this great country, in this great profession. That's what makes it so much fun. So when people say, I don't know, I don't know about dentistry, it's not often dentistry, it's how they're doing it. And I get it. There's a lot of complexities with the financial pieces, all that. But it's one of our favorite things as a coaching company is just helping people unravel this. I don't have a, I don't put people into a template or anything like that. I want them to love who they are as a result of going to work. And then the magic takes care of itself. So... It's, it's fun stuff. You know, it's funny. You, it's funny. You said a couple of things that really hit home. Um, you said that, you know, you don't have any rules. You can set your own rules. You know, you don't have to go into insurance if you don't want to. Um, you can do anything you really want when, you, when it comes to your dental practice. But it's amazing to me over the years how many people have not wanted to go into solo practice and they wanted to join a group practice. They wanted to join a DSO. They wanted to be an associate. They don't want the freedoms that dental practice ownership uh, allows. Yes, running a dental practice is not the easiest thing. You have patient issues. You have money issues. You have you know, staff issues. There are so many th complexities to running the business, as you said, but it, it gives you the freedom that most professions don't give you. Well, two things on that, because I'm passionate about this. Now, if you're listening, you're seeing I'm extremely biased. So just listen to that with a filter. I tell my kids this too. The only job security you'll ever know, ever, is owning your own thing. There's no such thing as job security. There is. So when you own your own thing, that's not. And it, it really boils down to two things, Len. Dentistry, you know, number one, you got to be a little bit self-aware. There are young dentists I meet, and they're just not the owning type. That's totally cool. They know who they are. Then there are people like, no, don't touch my stuff. I like the way I do it. They don't want to be told by anybody how to do it, and they want to do it their own way. That's kind of an entrepreneur-ish thing thinking style. The other thing I would say about these generations coming up, Len, you're on the speaking circuit a lot. I am too. There are very few people out there fighting for private care. There just aren't. You know, you, dental students are bombarded by literature daily on DSOs and making money and servicing debt. I talk to these kids in dental school. They don't even know solo practice is an option sometimes. I'm like, dude, you can own your own thing. And, you know, you get a young female dentist who's just really knows what she wants. It's some of my favorite thing. They'll get in practice and I'll go, okay, you're going to buy that practice? They go, yeah. I'll go, you're working seven to three right away. They go, what? I go, you're going to buy that practice. You're going to work seven to three, four days a week. They're going to go. Then they always go, no, how that? I'm like, you're going to watch your kids grow up. You're going to love dentistry. They always call me six months later and they go, that's crazy. I do so well. So my message to you is if you're listening, Solo practice is amazing. And, Len, if you get any of the big DSO guys on here, they're all, you know, I used to think they were the devil. And then I got to know of some of them. And they're not, they just service a certain market. I'm always going to be for the solo people. They're my people. But the DSOs will tell you, look, there's always going to be a private market. Heck, we're even competing against ourselves. And things that people don't know about DSOs is that when you grow, you need cash. Lots of it. And having like nine locations with 16 dentists isn't as fun as you think. When you have one of those locations that has to produce 500000 a month and you lose two dentists in the same day because they don't want to live in that town, that's called chest pain. You stay up all night looking at a ceiling fan spinning around going, how the heck am I going to keep that working? Now, some people are built for that stress. I am not. I know myself well enough. My son is 13. This summer, he got to play Little League Baseball in a little town that we live in called Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. Now, on a beautiful day on Sunday in August, we won the seventh grade Little League Championship. Now, no one will ever remember that except for the people that were there. It was a walk-off pass ball. We won seven to six. 
I have a one pound plastic trophy. I tackled the kid that, and it was one of the best days of my entire life. No one will ever remember that. And I have a plastic trophy. And my point is this. I thank God every day that I got to go out there at four o'clock or three 30 on a Tuesday night and kick dirt and go, I love my life and talk to these 13 year old boys coming around first. Hey buddy, how are you? Good to see you coach. You know, I, the cool thing about owning a business is that you get to make decisions. And if you think about it, and we're going to talk about that today, you get the, the big stuff, right? You don't have to worry about the little stuff. You can go, you know, Every business is a little bit messy, but when you get the big stuff right, you can wake up, I'm 50, Len, I'm 50. Here's what that means to me. I'm playing the back nine of my life, okay? Which means I have less holes in front of me than I do behind me. The first front nine, it's a different game. You can hit balls in the woods, you can screw up a lot. You know, the front nine is about making success. It's about getting it to work. It's about getting your family going, getting the business going. And then there's a certain day you wake up, you go, holy crap, I got less holes in front of me than I do behind me. Now you're playing a different game. You can't lose any balls into the woods. Every shot counts, every hole counts. You can't waste a day. I have learned every day I spend, I have one less day to spend. And I'm not gonna waste that for anybody or anything. And it's about significance. It's about making a making an impact. I want my kids. I I love it that you know a lot of the people I a lot of people I drink beer with in my neighborhood don't know what I do. They're like, you sell dental supplies. I go, yeah, it's great. Like I just I like being human. You know what I mean? And so my point to you is, as a dentist, if you're listening to this, is if you set this up right, you can really enjoy your life, and you can say, damn. That was worth it. You're going to see your kids' games, go to their practices, you know, all that stuff that was your why when you went into dentistry in the first place. No, and I agree with everything you said there. Like I said, one of the things that really hit home when we first spoke was, was, uh, and that was, I mean, I was a young dentist at the Greater New York meeting, but it was, it was setting yourself up for success. And um, I had just bought a practice at that point 14 years ago, um, and you know, I'm in a position now, like you said, I, I live in Florida. Um, I, I commute to Philadelphia. My, my practice kind of runs on its own because I set my, my practice up with the proper systems in place. Are, are there, are there you, know, dip, you know, ups and downs in the practice? Of course, any practice there is. But because, you know, everything was set up properly from the beginning, um, you know, it allows me to in, in be able to now to be, I'm only, I'm going to be 48, so I'm a couple years younger than you, but it allows me to, um, really enjoy the life I have, and you know, interesting enough, you know, COVID I think really um, a lot of, got a lot of people to reevaluate their lives. Um, you know, and my wife and I had talked about um, moving to warmer climates at some point. And one day we woke up and I said, "How would you like to move to Florida?" And she's like, "Excuse me," and I was like, "No, let, let's let's see what we can do. Let's see. the market's good. Believe it or not, let's see if we can find something." And I put my house in the market. You know, it sold two wow. days later. We got we got an offer, I should say. And I, we, we said, okay, are we going to do this or what? And literally, we, we decided in, in ju- at the end of July we wanted to move. Our house um, took, got an offer August 15th, I think it was, and we moved October 30th down to Florida, just like that. I mean, so, you know, it's really nice to see that. And, and another thing is, you know, you, I'm very fortunate that, you know, I have multiple careers. I, I'm a dental practitioner. I'm a speaker. I'm an author. I run, I run the podcast. Um, you know, I work for Bird Eye. So, you know, I help, I help people. And I'm, you know, I, you know, I look at it. I don't look at myself as an influencer, but people tell me I am. So I will, I will say I'm an influencer. But I, everything I do, no matter what I do, you know, I wake up every morning excited to do what I'm doing that day. And I think that's really important. Where I know there's miserable people out there that hate going to work. So I'm, I'm, you know, knock on wood, uh, I'm very fortunate. So um, I think that connects everything you just said because I mean, I can see the smile on your face when when you're talking about it. And you know, I have a similar idea on on, on those things. So um, you know, kudos to you for kind of getting offices and getting dentists to understand that the value of a family, the value of not focusing only on the business aspect, um, but to set themselves up so they can, they can enjoy life. Like you said. And I'm going to, um, yeah. So keep going. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, 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 no. I was going to say, so I want to, let's, let's jump into um, some of the things we wanted to talk about here. And, and why don't we talk about um, what you referred to as the a plan? Because that was speaking to point number one that we wanted to get to. So 
Um, hopefully that was the most important thing and not the oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you so, know so so talk about the I game will I, we'll talk about the game now I want to preface this by saying look you know if you and I sat down and we just did like an open conversation what do you need to be successful as a dentist we might come up with I'd say seven or eight things it's not going to be a list of ninety two things would you agree like it's you don't need if you get the bare essentials right, you can truly be successful and then be aware enough about things that you got to improve. So like today, I want to boil it down. People always say, well, what do you need to be successful as a dentist? These are the things I've learned the hard way. Now, I'm not here to tell you, oh, I figured this all out. I have screwed up more than anyone listening to this right now. I've made more mistakes, wasted more money, and there are things, I've gotten a few things right. And most of the things I've gotten right have been through the help of other people. So having a mentor, a coach, a great friend that's an entrepreneur, the thing to remember is like, there's people that have figured stuff out and you're ignorant to ignore them because they've spent a life to, if somebody spent their whole life writing an entire book on how to run a business and you can't pay $9 to read it, that's just arrogance at the highest level, I think. So I think one of the things you just gotta be open. And again, I don't have like any perfect answers, but I'm gonna give you the five biggest lessons I see. Or if I'm talking to a young dentist, let's say you're 32 right now, and you're like, what do I need? You need five things to be successful. Now I'm gonna stay away from the clinical side of things because we could go down a rabbit hole about how good clinically you need to be. Look, you gotta be improving your clinical skills all the time, but let's talk about the business side of things. And the number one thing is this. Now, I'll tell you what I do every single day. I had a coach come in years ago and say, you're making this way too hard. And I was, I was, I had priorities. As, a, as an entrepreneur, one of the things you gotta remember about your brain that you don't often understand is you think everything is important, but it's not. There's a few things you gotta get right, and then you move on to the next thing. So my first thing is this, everybody's gotta have an a plan, a plan, your one page strategic plan. Now, Lynn, I'll show you this. Okay, so this is my backpack. I do this every single day. I bring in my backpack. I set it right to my right. I pull out two things every single day. I pull out this plastic sheet, and we're going to talk about what's in the plastic sheet. On one side of it is my plan. This is my entire strategic plan, one page, all the numbers. Now, I'm not going to show you what's on it, but it's all broken down for the year, the quarter, everything. And as you're going to see, I only have four priorities this quarter. Our quarter ends March 31st. I only have to get done with my team four things. I used to put 70 things on there. Now, would you agree it's better to get four things done really well and as a team draw a line through them and go, we did it, than try to do 70 poorly. Now, here's the other thing too. I'm the craziest person that works here. So I have idea after idea after idea. And what I failed to recognize was that just exhausts people around you. Like idea, I'd, then now even today, people will say to me in my, even in Memorial Hill, hey, hey bald guy, stick to the paper. What are you, you're talking about something that's not on the paper. Now, here's the cool thing. I'm the entrepreneur. I get to decide what's on the paper. So just stick to the plan. I pull this out every single day to remind myself a few simple disciplines is what creates success. The other thing I pull out of my backpack is I have three ring binder with everything that happens with dates on it. So I can just go back and go, man, I talked to Len last week. What? Okay, what did we talk about? I've got a recorded something of whatever was talked about and I just have stacks of them. It keeps me on the rails. I have found this. This is where I'm going. The you're gonna run into what's called ceilings of complexity. Dan Sullivan called that years ago where you just can't do anymore. And what you have to do as an entrepreneur is you gotta make them simple again. Now, simple is not easy, it's not. Simple requires thinking, it requires all of this. And on your plan, when you're thinking about your future as a dentist, it's gotta be thought out really well. Let me give you an example. One of the worst plans I've ever seen is from a kid who's like, yeah, I do 4 million. I'm going to build another practice and get that to 4 million. And then I'm going to get, you know, 13 times EBITDA for both of these. I'm like, do you have kids? He's like, yeah, I got three of them. I go, boys, girls, all boys. I go, what time do you get home? Eight o'clock. I'm like, dude, where are they on your plan? You know what I mean? Like, what's your plan? Like, is now I'm not damning his plan because it might work. But at the end of the day, like, what does this mean? Like the problems you have as a dentist are not often the problems. They're how you think about your problems. Like, do you really need the money to make you happy? Maybe you do, but Len, you're surrounded by people. I am too. They make an insane amount of money 
And every more, every hundred thousand more that they make doesn't add to any more happiness. There's a, I could show you on a spreadsheet right now. You're only going to make so much money and the government's pretty much going to get about 37% of it anyway. And I can show you how many more days you're going to have to work and what you're going to have to give up. My son hit a home run when he was nine years old on a Saturday. I was at first base. I cried like a baby, my little boy. And I thought to myself, I would have never wanted to miss this for all the money. I watched that ball fly over, and the head coach who was in the dugout got out of the dugout, started running out. I'm like, why is he running out? Well, he knew the second it went off the bat, it was going to go over. I did. I saw my son come around first. I started to follow him, and the coach is like, no, he's got to run the bases by himself. Again, one of the best days of my entire life. The point is this, is that, like, make sure your plan when you accomplish it, we go, that's a pretty well run plan. So I'm going to talk about what's on that. That's number one. Number two, I think everybody's got to have a clear chart. I call it a function accountability chart. So on the back side of this, I'll show you. This is what I call a function accountability chart. Now, a lot of these things have been memorialized and simplified in a great book called Traction by Gino Wickman. If you haven't read it, you're missing out. It's one of the five best books ever written, ever it's probably one of the few books you'll ever have to read. And he simplified a lot of the thinking. And I absolutely agree with everything. I agree with every single word in that book. And his, his point is this, and mine is too. You got to have who does what. Every person in my organization, I know exactly what they do. They also know. So when it comes to HR issues, everybody knows who does it. Now, the other thing it speaks to, this isn't a hierarchy chart. It's a responsibility chart. Who is responsible? Because when everyone's responsible for something, no one's responsible for something. And so everybody's got to know who's in charge of the money, who's in charge of the time, who's in charge of HR issues, who's in charge of the finances here. Bam, those are your peeps. And they just get you results. So it's really important just to know this is how what helps me every day and what will help you as a dentist is number one, you got to have a plan. And the plan's got to be well thought out. And that's why you need the help of an expert. It doesn't always have to be a coach. It could be an accountant. It could be a mentor. Some people will go, dude, don't do that. That's stupid. I think this, Len, I think it's, now don't shoot me because I'm just the messenger. There's never, ever, 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 ever a reason to see a patient after five o'clock. You can't give me one. Because if you see a patient after five o'clock, that screams to me, you don't give patients a good enough to reason to come in the hours before five o'clock, which screams to me also, you don't value what you do. You can never say to yourself as a dentist, it's just a crown. If you say that, you're just a dentist. What you do is crazy important. Vascular surgeons are the best. They explain to you, this is when we do these procedures. We do them on Tuesday morning, and we're going to need you here at 6 a.m. You go, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, and you rearrange your life to fit into You're theirs. Dead. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's how it works. You can't yep, yep. fit into other people's lives. So that's part of your plan. So let me go to number two again. It's the accountability chart. This changes all the time. You have people change. You add another operator. You add another function. You add some marketing. You've got to have a plan in which you know how people work and what they do and what they're responsible for. So it's critical. Now, another thing I would say is this. So those are the first two things you need. I think you got to have a plan. It's got to be really well thought out. And everybody's got to be able to look at your plan and go, I know exactly how this works. Len, have you ever been in a situation, or if you're listening to this, you ever been in a situation where you're with a team member and they go, I really don't know where you're headed. You know, like, where are we going? Like, what's our vision for this? And do you ever think, I have told them like nine times and they just, the problem is talking. Stop talking. Start showing and then start being a good enough leader that you're like, hey, we do everything on here. They'll start believing in here. And here's the other thing. This is really cool. If you only have five priorities for 90 days or three priorities or even four, what's so cool is when you mark those off, they come up with bigger goals. They go, I think we could do more. And you go, really? That's so cool. They take them on as their own, and you're dying for that. And when you free up the brain space, like, this is all I have. I don't need a computer. I don't need social media. I need this plastic sheet because every time we get something done in this plastic sheet, my life gets a little bit better. And I get to where I want to go. So it's critically important. Now, one other piece, number three, I would say is this. You got to have metrics. You got to have KPIs. There's 
there are numbers in dentistry. Now, it isn't always money. Like that's people are all money. No, no, no. If you don't measure things, you're just thinking, you're just talking. Money, you know, it, it could be money, it could be whatever. Here's the bottom line. Having data removes all emotion. If you and I, Len, if you and I work together, let's say I'm your hygienist and you're trying to tell me something. If you and I aren't talking about data, we're just having a conversation. And a lot of it is going to be anecdotal. It's how I feel and how you feel. And that is a very dangerous conversation. If we're looking at data, I know how we can improve our relationship. What if your kids went to a school where they didn't give grades? How fun would that be? Hey, how's my son doing? He's good. I gave him a star. You gave him a star. Yeah, we just give stars at this school. You know, my daughter has, I think it's an 11th place ribbon from a swim meet. Like, I'm so irritated by that. There's, there's only six lanes in the pool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, not everybody gets a medal. Not everybody should be celebrated for effort. That's just not how the world works. Now, I'm not asking you to be mean, but here's the cool thing. If you come up with a few metrics, some of them might be, you know, things that are going to make your practice healthy. You and I as a team can work together and we can improve metrics. We're not looking for perfect. If you're listening to this, write this down. You're never looking for perfect. You're just looking for progress. We're going to start somewhere. And every single week, I'm going to be your coach. I don't like the word boss. I like the word coach. I'm here. I'm your coach. Come to me. We work together. What do you need help with? I'm here to support you. Let's make a little progress on these KPIs. That's part of your plan. And you can make incremental progress, and it makes the world better. Len, would you agree? If your practice gets a little bit better every year, you're pretty good as a dentist, right? 100% so. And, you know, it's funny. You said, you know, it um, – it's dental. I, it's not, you don't have to be perfect. I call it dental. It's called dental practice for a reason because you don't have to be perfect at it. So, you know, practice versus perfect. That's what I always say. So, um, so, it, you know, KPIs are, are a very big deal. Um, there's other, there's obviously companies out there that, um, you know, will, will be able to track your KPIs for you. And sometimes that information is, is completely overwhelming for practices. So what do you think are some of the most important KPIs that you think a practice needs to follow? Because I think if they're listening to this, they need to make sure that these are the most important things that are going on in their practice. Because like I said, I love Dental Intel. I think Dental Intel is a fabulous product, um, but it gives you a lot of information, some of it which is not necessary to have to like look at. So you know, if you have to pick the top two or three KPIs, what do you think they are? So a great question. Now, I love Dental Intel also. Now, I know all those guys over there. You're talking about billions and billions of data points. And they've all, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. They've created their five pillars of profitability. I think that's really all you need. You know, you need PPV, production per visit. You need um, number of visits. Now, this is, you could apply this thinking to any, if I had a coffee shop, Len, you and I all had a coffee shop. We're going to, I was a three-time employee of the month at Applebee's. I, my family had no money growing up. I learned how to hustle. And Every time we go buy an Applebee's, I say to my kids, three times. They go, you're so weird, Dad. It's one of my favorite accomplishments ever. I loved serving people. I loved it. I freaking, when people wanted to give away their shifts, I was like, I'll take it. They're like, I'll take it. Now, one thing I know about Applebee's, I worked at the Applebee's here at Southridge in um, Milwaukee. I, my check average was twice what often another servers would be. Now, I wasn't brilliant. I knew, I knew how to work the system. Like, Len, if you came in, you go, hey, you come in, you go, God, hard day. I go, hard day? I go, you know what the perfect thing for hard day is? You go, what? I go, Bahama Mama. You want one? You go, yeah. I could get three out of four people at a table, order Bahama Mama. Well, those things are three fifty dollars a pop before you even take a look at the menu. Now, what happens when your check average? Same thing applies here. That same thing is practice. It's how much per check or per visit people are spending or investing into practice. These are what's called leading indicators. I'm so glad you asked. This would be a whole separate episode. But look, this is what we put on our sheet. You're going to put PPV on here. What's your PPV as a practice? You know, you already know what it is. So if it's $421 an hour, we're going to go to $435. It's not about money. A lot of times it's about scheduling. It's about being a little bit more efficient. When you go to 425, you're like, it has a dramatic impact to the rest of the formula. A second one would be number of visits. Number of visits a dental practice has in a month 
whether it be through hygiene, doctor, whatever, we, if you have 310, we go to 325, you're now multiplying those two numbers, which has an exponential impact on the outcome. Very important, we're gonna give the simple lesson today. Those are what's called leading indicators. Lagging indicators, because I've been doing this for more than 25 years, are what people measure after all the work has been done, which is production, collections. It's very hard to run a business when your focus is a lagging indicator because all you're focused on, and here's the other thing, it has unintended circumstances because your team hears you say, we need to know what we're producing per day, you know, or how much we, now I get it. I totally get it. But what's really cool when you keep the plan simple is your team can be focused on PPV visits. We're also going to take a look at collections percentage. Now, if we could go down a rabbit hole on that one, it's very important to know your gross and net collections percentage. One of them, people always say, well, my collections are 100%. Well, you're collecting 100% of what you could collect, but I really want to know the discrepancy between what your gross production is and your actual collections because that tells me everything. Because you might be at 99 or 102%. That's awesome. But what you don't know is that your real collections percentage is 66%, which means you write off a third of all that you do, which means even more. I love this stuff. You work one out of every three days for free and your spouse is super upset at you because you don't have any money and you can't afford to take a vacation. That can be fixed. That can totally be fixed. First of all, you got to have the data and you got to know somebody can close the gap. And that's one of the things we do with, I talk to a lot of, you know, this is so funny. You speak, Glenn, people come up to you and they go, I have a young dentist to come up to you in a seminar and go, yeah, I'm fee for service. I go, that's awesome. Yeah, they go, I only have three PPOs. I'm like, that's not how I would characterize fee for service. I'm like, no, no, fee for service is not three PPOs. Yeah, I'm only on three PPOs. I'm it's like, zero. Oh, it's, zero. it's zero. zero, it's cash. But they don't, they don't often know what they don't know. But what's really, now they get upset when they find out 66% or they're writing off a third. But what's happened, I go, look, you can get frustrated right now. But we're going to get you 75%. Then 85%. Well, ultimately what happens is you make a ton more money. You now are starting to do dentistry on people that appreciate you. You start making your own decisions. You get more confident and you go, wow, dentistry is just better. Every change process that's ever been created that works starts with telling the truth. AA, you have to admit you're an alcoholic. Changing a dental practice, you got to look at the data. There's tons of opportunity when you look at the data. I will often pull the data from Dental Intel, and I'll say to a dentist, there's a ton of opportunity here. Don't get mad. We're just going to fix. So, Len, I'm going to answer your question. It was long-winded. We're just going to fix a few things every 90 days, and bam, in two years from now, you'll go, this is crazy. Make sense? So those would be my top three yeah, as it makes, far it as. Makes, it makes, it makes oh, good. Yeah, it, it makes it makes a, it makes a sense that um, you know I was going to tell you that you know I talk to doctors all the time uh, about all different things. Obviously, reviews is one of the things, but they pick my brain about other things because I know how to run a business. Okay, and what I've been what I talk to people about is I'm, I'm so busy and I take all these PPOs. So my thing to them is like, well, look at the PPOs you're taking and drop the ones that are least reimbursing you. Well, I don't want to lose like 20% of my patients. I'm like, well, let me ask you a question. If you lose 20% of your patients and increase your fees 20%, what just happened? They go, well, I work less and make more money. Well, there you go. That's what you should do. We, we have a, a problem thinking that we're going to lose patients who are not in insurance. And yes, you may lose patients because like if you have Delta and you drop Delta, Delta, you will lose some of your patients because they won't even reimburse the doctor directly. They, they go to the... Yeah, they go to the patient and the patients don't want to pay in full. I mean, there's all these intricacies there. But, you know, if, if you're getting reimbursed at poor levels, drop those insurance companies, work less and make the same amount of money. That's the way I look at it. So when you were, when you were talking about that, um, I was kind of snickering because I had that conversation with a lot of people. The other thing, the other interesting thing is that when, um, when patients are calling the office and trying to make appointments and there's no appointments available, they're going to go somewhere else. So you, you, you have, you talk about production per visit. You talk about the number of visits you have. You have to make yourself available to these patients anyway. And that's also a problem that people have. Right, right. But here's the cool thing. You know, all of these things are a puzzle. They're a puzzle. You give me any problem. And Len, this would be a fun thing. Like it would almost be like treatment planning for business. People go, oh, I don't have any time to put. Okay. So listen, you only have, you have 24 hours a day, just like us. Okay. All right. Let's figure this out. You can figure everything out. 
the the challenge that most dentists have is they like people they don't want to focus on the money sometimes or they don't want to look at this metrics in a dental practice it's a lot easier than you think when you put all these numbers in front of you put everything on the table you as a dentist can figure out the puzzle and you can start to play. I call them levers. You can either play with the levers or the dials. You're exactly right on the insurances. I have a lot of young dentists that come to us and go, hey, look, uh, you know, two doctor practice, we're partners. We have 5,000 PPO patients. There's no way we could do faith for service. I go, oh, that's one way to think about it, but let's get you to 80% PPO next year. And then the year after that, you'll be at 70%, you know, 50%. You can start to make decisions. You can change your hours. You can change your fees. Everything is fixable in dentistry. And um, the other thing that's at play, and I'll just say this before we move on to the next thing, the insurance companies are billion dollar you know, entities. You're not gonna beat them. They're freaking crazy smart. There's what's called shared agreements now. You should Google that to find that out and that'll terrify you. You're the boiled frog. What you don't understand is you flood your practice full of these things because your team they know your head is going to fly off and green puke's going to come out of your mouth and start spinning around if they see an empty chair. So they flood your practice of all these less desirable insurances. Well, before you know it, you're writing off a third or half of what you're doing because they're terrified that you're going to see an empty chair. And before you know it, you're the boiled frog. You don't even know what you're doing right now. And now your only answer is ramp it up. So there's so many ways. Um, I'll just say this. If, if you're listening at any level, your problem is completely fixable. The only problem that's not fixable is a health problem. Okay. So, you know, dentists need to understand this. Like anything can be fixed. I had a dentist that went through a $20 million bankruptcy. That can be fixed. When you have cancer, that's a challenge. Okay. It is. Problems mm -hmm. are not, yep. people, people make these problems so big. Oh, I got all, no, that can be fixed. You just need to listen to the right person. I'm no different than anybody else here. You know, so uh, I think it's really important. Another thing that I got to talk about too, and this would be number four, is you got to have the right people around you, whether it be advisors or your team members. Pete Dawson said this to me at the ripe old age of 25. He said, Kirk, I'm going to make your job as a consultant really easy. When you get the right people in a dental practice, you can produce twice as much in half the time with a quarter of the stress. Now, I wrote that down, and it was very easy to conceptualize. And I'm like, Pete, that's pretty heavy. Wow. But as I got older, I'm like, damn, that's it. Because any dentist that I have that had the largest month ever, they never say, oh, I've been doing big cases. Yeah, I did a billboard. They never say that. They go, dude. I got an amazing person up front now, or I sent my treatment coordinator to training. I got a new hygienist, or I finally have an assistant that knows what I'm thinking. Like it's, you get the right people around you. You walk in and you go, oh, like, or Len, how fast can the right chair side assistant change any dentist's life? Like 60 seconds. Very quickly. Very quick. Yeah, very the right quickly. chair side assistant. Been, been assistant so. Yeah. What's her name? What's her name? My, uh, uh, her name is Alex. Okay. So Alex, Alex, Alex will say to you, this, I haven't even met Alex, but Alex will say this to you. Get out of here. I'll do this. Go. And you go, where have you been my whole life? Thank you. Like they know how to keep you in the circle and they can do a lot of these things and your life gets better when you have the right people. Now they got to be able to write people and they got to have the right core values. They got to be able to get things done. That's number four. When you get the right people in the right seats. Now you can have the right people in the wrong seats. That's a challenge too. The, ch the real challenge is when you have the wrong people in the wrong seats. You already know what you have to do with that. You hire somebody, they don't fit your core values. They can't even do the job. They got to go. Now, you've also had this circumstance. You can have the wrong person in the right seat, which is you have an amazing hygienist, best you've ever had, but she's hell on wheels. She rode a broom to work. She sucks the life out of everybody else in the office. You already know what has to happen with that. Like you can't keep her around either or she will instantly destroy your organization one person at a time and you will have no credibility and you'll learn to hate going to work. And if you're like me, you're a wuss and you don't do anything about it early in your career. So you have a great team member like the, who stops you in the hallway and says, okay, today's the day, Dr. Len. It's me or her. Okay. I, I can't work with her anymore. She's evil. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I think the challenge is number one, getting really clear about your core values. Now I joke about this, but this is not a joke. If you can see my sweatshirt, core values are everything. 
I used to think, oh, it's a nice thing to say. It's a wonderful thing. They're in here. No, they are your flag in the ground. This is who we are, and it is non-negotiable. In order for me to experience joy at work, I have got to be the person I've always wanted to be, and this is your flag in the ground. They're the non-negotiable behaviors for you to work here. What's so cool is when you memorialize and put them on coffee cups, put them everywhere. I feel like Iron Man every day when I go to work. I put this battery park right here. like I feel like I'm a little bit of a superhero. Because now you can communicate with people. I've only had two conversations since putting this into something that's been a difficult conversation with a team member. One of them went like this. You cannot treat her that way. We have core values here. She's working just as hard as you. Now, these are non-negotiable behaviors. I get it if you don't want to live by our core values, but that means you can't work here. Are we good? You know, so it's really cool when you can put those down. Having the right people changes your life over and over and over again. Now, you put them into the chart, they know what they do, makes it simple. Makes sense? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, the, you know, I wanted to get your thoughts on a, a couple of quick things. Um, for the offices that you, know, you take insurance and they are writing off um, a significant amount of money, um, th you know, they don't really sometimes recognize that that's kind of their marketing expenses, bringing those insurance in as a discount. So uh, I'm, I'm curious what your feelings are um, for, to dealing with those, because I get that call a lot. Right. Um, how do you deal with those types of practices who are so insurance heavy and they want to basically um, uh, get out of the insurance game? Yeah, I would be completely transparent. I've said this to many dentists. Like, let's say I went into dentistry and I became a dentist, you know, and just I, I might go into, I, I probably wouldn't do that now at this stage of my life, but if you're a young dentist, you can save the ship. You could go right into insurance 100% with the idea of, I'm just going to use that to get going, and then I'm going to wean off of it slowly and build a fee-for-service practice. You could easily do that. Again, it's playing with the levers. One of the things you have to do is do some type of a PPO analysis. Now, I want to do this. A couple things I'm going to want. I want to know your production. I want to know how many patients. I want to know how many new patients. I want to know the percentage of chair time. We're going to break all these metrics down because here's what happens, Len. A lot of people go, well, I'm going to drop, you know, Delta or whatever. And they go, well, it's really like 25% of my practice. Well, they don't know it takes up 47% of their chair time. I'm like, dude, you don't know. You're, you're not doing an in in-depth analysis. Once you have the data, you can slow down the participation. It might include writing a letter. It might. You just can't do it emotionally. But again, here's the thing. Pete used to say this all the time. Pete Dawson. It takes five to seven years to become an overnight success. And he said, even with being a fee-for-service practice, I have one in Ohio. Uh, it's two years now. He's been off of insurance completely. It took him about five, six years. It was a slow, methodical process of clearly identifying. And he called me. He goes, dude, does the panic ever go away when you're off of insurance? He goes, I make so much money now. I go, the panic never goes away. You always think the world is going to you know, fall out. But now it's time to ride the bike. So I, I hope that answers your question. My point is this, is like, it's messy. But when you can start with data, you can start to analyze how we spend our time. Here's the other thing, and this isn't for this podcast. There's a lot of rules and regulations when it comes to insurances. There's not one in the United States that tells you how to use your time. Not one law, Len, in, your, in the world that says you have to govern your time this way. You can choose how to govern your time however you want, which means... Me as a business owner, I can put whatever I want in my schedule. Now, I'm going to treat everybody with, with dignity and respect. I'm going to treat everybody with world-class customer respect. I am going to decide what goes in my schedule. And when your team understands that, game on. That makes a whole lot of sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. So before we um, do our would you rather little questionnaire here, is there anything else that you felt was important to – uh, bring up or discuss on on this. Episode. Yeah, one more thing that we didn't get into, but this is just kind of the the bow on everything is you got to have systems and checklists for everything. Just everything has got to have a system or a checklist because every time you create a system, you save hundreds, if not thousands, of hours in the future. Even if it's like financial arrangements, some people have like nine ways to pay for dentistry. No, there's not nine ways to pay. Slim it down. Create a system, even for how you do handoffs and hygiene. Everything you put into place saves hundreds, if not thousands of hours in the future. 
and it creates high levels of predictability. That's the last thing I would say. But again, keep it simple. Have a plan. You know, have an accountability chart, function accountability chart. You got a few KPIs, you got the right people, you got right systems, you're off. That's 80%, if not 90% of your battles in dentistry. Gotcha, gotcha. No, that, no, makes, that, makes, that, makes, that makes a whole lot of sense. sense. I think, I think this, this was, was uh, some, some really, really great, great information. information. And, you know, you know in, a in a couple, couple seconds, seconds, I'm going to want to um, have you, um, you know, give people how to reach out to you and help them uh, contact you if they want help with their with their practices or setting up, you know, a, a, a chart of, uh, and all these KPIs. So I think that, uh, the information that you provided was really helpful to the, to the listeners. So let's have a little bit of fun, um, as, as we end this up here. So a, as you know, as I showed you, I have a deck, um, a, de a bunch of deck of cards, but the would you rather deck is, is, is the most popular one. So I'm going to ask you, uh, 10 questions, um, lightning round. So what I tell you is, uh, give an answer and a very, very ble brief explanation. I don't want to go into a, a 10 minute diatribe as to why you pick one. So brief and then a quick answer. Okay. So, so, um, I'm going to, I'm going to mix the deck up. There won't be anything inappropriate. Right. So, don't, so don't think that. All right. I'm shuffling the deck. Okay. Would you rather have your fingers always feel sticky or your throat always feel itchy? Some of these are crazy Fingers questions. sticky. I don't know where that question. Came. I just I like to talk. I don't want to cough. Uh, finger sticky. I can deal with that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, <laughs> so of course, when it comes to um, when it comes to talking, okay, and we talk a lot. Um, I'm actually looking for this one because I think it's very. Um, uh, here we go. Ready? Would you rather fart in an elevator full of strangers? Or belch loudly while giving an important presentation. <laughs> oh gosh, because I've done both. Um, I would probably oh, I belch. Know. The belch, the belch would probably be, you know, I, my mom and my dad and my. I have a ninety-four-year-old grandmother. I feel like I should be respectful. You know, I don't. I would. I would belch. That would be my answer. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah. Would you rather be handcuffed to the most annoying person you know for 24 hours or go camping with someone who likes you, but you don't like them back? Oh, for how long is the camping trip? 24 hours. Oh, I'll take the camping. I, uh, oh, go. yeah, camp. Yeah. Yeah. Can't 24 hours. Okay. So if it's camping and handcuffed and it's both 24 hours, I'll do the camping. Cause I'll go to the bathroom many times and just like, Whatever. I be I gotta move around. It would be very hard to have somebody tethered to me. I hope that makes sense. Okay, perfect. That's a that's a great answer. Okay. Would you rather blow up a hundred balloons or lick five hundred envelopes? <laughs> Neither. Um I would do the envelopes. Uh just because I think I'd pass out doing the balloons and I hate doing it. And I can't tie them. I can't tie them. So I'll do the envelopes. Okay, this is this is interesting. Would you rather have no eyebrows or an extra finger? Uh, no eyebrows, for sure, for sure. Because I've had no eyebrows at one well, time. I had, Matt, and, it, and it also matches your, your no hair. So yeah, I don't, that, I don't, I'm not fond of hair. I actually don't, you know, who cares, right? <laughs> okay, um, would you, let's see, I don't like that one. Um, this is too political, I won't go there. <laughs> would you rather have your voice sound like Gilbert Gottfried? Or Fran Drescher. <laughs> so let's say I, I had something in this hand and it, it would make you forget about what you had in your hand. Like, uh, Fran Drescher, I can't listen to. That is, it's like fingers on a chalkboard. I think I could make the Gil Gilbert Godfrey, you said? Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, Gilbert Godfrey, I, I, yeah. Could, I could have some fun with that. I couldn't have any fun with the Fran Drescher voice. That's just too crazy for me. Okay. All right, this is, um, would you rather have creamy or chunky peanut butter? Uh, chunky for sure. I love, I, I always prefer chunky. I just, I like crunch. I like crunch. Okay. Uh, that's inappropriate. I won't ask you that. Um, would you rather take cold showers for the rest of your life or never get more than four hours of sleep again? Ooh, no, I need to or sleep. only get four hours of sleep again. Oh, I can't do that. I'd be a miserable human being. I could, I could learn how to love cold showers. I need, I need six to function so yeah i agree with you 100 i need my sleep yeah so, amen brother um 
And there's, and there's always, there's always, if you don't like cold showers, there's always um, deodorant and there's cologne. Sure, so, I didn't think Puerto of that. Chat, Look Rican at you, chat. you're creative, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's ways around that. Look, I've asked these questions so many times, so I've heard so many different um, uh, answers to these questions. Love this it. one, I'm, this one I'm saving, this is the last question. Okay, so would you rather abolish war or find a cure for every type of cancer? Hmm, ooh, that's a good one. I want both. Um, but the cancer one, just because I've had so many friends affected by cancer, I've lost too many friends that I would love to have the cure for that and never experience that again. Yeah. My, man, yeah, my mom passed away from cancer. My dad has cancer. So yes, definitely Sorry the cancer, cancer route. Um, and then the last one, which I ask everybody, would you never be able to use a search engine again or never use your smartphone apps again? Um, I would, I, I say this all the time. I'd throw my phone away in a second if I could. So I don't really care. Um, I don't need the apps. I actually, I don't even need either. Um, I, I do like the search though. Like even helping my kids with homework. I'm just like, I don't know. Let's just Google something. Um, or, um, you know, we, my buddy and I were, we were at a basketball game for the kids. Like, and we were arguing about the largest sports contract. I go, Pat Mahomes has, he goes, no, no, he doesn't. And so sure enough, we Googled it. It's Lionel Messi, 671. So I was like, okay, it's kind of cool just to have that kind of reference. So I would do the Google search. I, I want that one. Okay, I get rid you. of the apps. Yeah. Yeah, Google, Google is important. That, that one's a tricky question for some people. For sure. Well, thank, well, thank you, you for, for being such a good sport, sport there, there and answering those questions. Um, I think that just takes the podcast to a little bit of a, you know, not, I not love so it. oriented. So, well, I'm glad. That's why, you know, hey, you may want to incorporate it on yours. It's I am. I'm you a, go to the website. And, you're making my and, life and better is, already. I'm going to get the app yeah. right after we hang up. Yeah. His name is Travis, uh, Travis Brown, the guy who owns the company. So, um, so, hey, real quick, are you, uh, and this is totally off, the, off topic, have you um, seen the Clubhouse app? Have you been involved? Have you? Um, Adriana Booth, one of our coaches, just got me on it yesterday. So, uh, actually, it was the yeah. day before yesterday. So, I got all the notifications. Tell me what it is. I don't know what it is. I, I see everybody on it. Tell so, me what it is. Club, Clubhouse is a, a drop-in audio um, app that people can, you, you start a room, you can make the title of anything you want. And there's a whole Dennis club um, that you can join to. Um, and then when you po host a, a, a room in there, all the people are notified if you're following them and people will join. And like, I'm, I'm on it right now. There's a room with 303 people, 189 people. It's, it's very popular. So uh, what, so, for so your stuff and your, yeah. So I'm on it. Like that? I've never looked at anything. So mm -hmm. what do I do? Do I, do I look for that room? So, so you, so you, so yeah, well, you can go to, you can go search. Okay. Um, so search, just search for Dennis club, dentist, and you club. can join that. Okay. And, and dentist then, space uh, yeah, club. Then it, yeah, or Dennis, just Dennis. Yeah. It's called the Dennis club. Yeah. Um, there you go. So, 219 members. Is yeah, that what, so it's the um, tooth out of the mouth here. right there. Uh, let's see. Yeah. 290. Yep. That's it. Correct. Yep. Dennis club. All right. So I'm in, um, Yep. Yep. So now you, you'll, you can see when people will put, put rooms in that. Um, and then you can search for anybody you want. Uh, there you and, are. Look, look, there's Len. Look at you. Yeah. I just, I just, I just actually followed. I just actually was already following you. Um, so it, like I said, it's a very, I think it's a very cool app um, for what you do and how you talk and how you do things um, and your passion for things. I think you'd make the perfect um, person to host one of these rooms. Um, so it's really getting popular. So I would just try it out and check it out. You'll get invites every so often. I had six invites yesterday. I have three more now, so you can invite additional people. It's because it's invite only right now. So, um, you know, I, I would definitely, uh, check it out when you can. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to check playing, it out. Playing with it. I think you'll, I think with you, will, uh, look, I know you've got priorities. Um, I know you've got, you know, stuff in your life that you, you do more than you do here. Uh, with this, with your career, but this is something I think will help you with your with your career a little bit more too. Yeah, thanks, um, brother. Appreciate it. So, um, so how can people uh, reach out to you? How can they find out more about what Actinol does um, if they want to learn about um, you know coaching? Uh, what your company does, what's the best way for them to reach out and find out? Yeah, absolutely. So I appreciate that, brother. If you want to check out our website, it's actdental.com, actdental.com. You can also email me directly. It's just Kirk, K-I-R-K, 
at actdental.com. And I tell everybody everything. I mean, I love talking to anybody about anything. It's one of the few things I do well, and I love this industry so much. Um, and people are like, well, I can't afford a coach. I'm like, it doesn't matter. If I talk to a young dentist who says, I don't know where I'm going to practice, and they're thinking about moving to a town, and they move to where they want to go, and I, I was able to help them in some way, it's like my favorite thing running in them. So if you're just struggling with somebody to talk to, you just need somebody to answer, I'm happy to do that. Email me at Kirk at actdental.com. Um, but Len, I think what you're doing is just absolutely fabulous. Um, this was so much fun. I love the ending. I love what you're up to. Dude, I wish you nothing but the best. It's going to be a great road ahead for you. And, and I look forward to uh, joining you in about 45 yes. minutes. 45 minutes. Uh, actually, no, excuse me. Is it 45 minutes or let's see what I want to, uh, 45 minutes, sorry, joining you 45 minutes in your, on your, uh, podcast so we can get something recorded there. Guys, if you, if you like this episode, please, uh, tell your colleagues, please share it. Uh, please promote it on social. Um, if you are a subscriber, not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, that's how we gain our followers and listeners. Um, and, uh, Kirk, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me today. Um, I, I really enjoyed our conversation and, and literally I, I really, what I think really separates from you and, you know, I'm excitable, you know, I'm passionate about what I do, but you've got some energy like I've never seen before. So I really appreciate that. You make, you make doing what I do fun. So, um, thank you for being such an awesome guest and, and really giving a nice little, um, information to the listeners. So, um, you know, I, I, always, I always end these podcasts. We didn't talk about reviews. Um, it, it was originally Raving Patients podcast, but, I, you know, episodes are not always functioning on reviews. Right. Um, it, um, it's about helping and growing growing businesses and helping my fellow colleagues. So thank you for being a part of that. And um, as I end these episodes, remember, there's two words I use. Is remember, your reputation matters. Um, until the next episode, again, thanks, Kirk, for joining me, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Awesome.